moving night. On a calm night, everything was silent and still. The moon shone brightly, casting a pale glow over the landscape. Every single engine was in their sheds, resting their weary wheels so they could be ready for another day. Two engines, however, were still working. Percy was pulling the mail train, and Boko was taking a long and heavy goods train to the mainland. Even though it was late at night, Boko was determined to do whatever was necessary to arrive safely and on time. Come on, he called to the trucks. Come on, come on. All I want is to arrive in Bridlington safely and on time. So please, no nonsense. Fortunately, Boko didn't have any problems with the troublesome trucks, since they were too tired to cause any mischief. The journey to Bridlington was a smooth one for Boko. There were no mishaps along the way, and every signal that he encountered was green. Won't be long now, won't be long now, said Boko. We may arrive in Bridlington 15 minutes earlier than expected. Speak for yourself, the truck said in unison. After 15 minutes had passed, Boko was right. He had arrived in Bridlington. He was uncoupled from his trucks and started his way back home. Now, getting to Bridlington was a breeze for Boko. Returning home was different. A red signal forced Boko to stop, and he had to wait patiently for it to change from red to green. He waited, and waited, and waited. Boko was starting to get anxious. How long has it been now? Boko asked. Over 15 minutes, said his driver. Boko frowned, but he knew there was nothing he could do, except wait a little longer. As he waited, he noticed an unfamiliar diesel on the other line. It seemed to Boko that he was looking for something. Or someone. Boko was about to ask the diesel what he was looking for, when he heard a familiar horn. Bowler! Boko said quietly. Any sight of them? asked Bowler. Sorry, I looked everywhere. No luck, said the diesel. How can you let them get away? growled Bowler. Excuse me, they charged at me in full force and pushed me off the rails, and I had to wait 20 minutes to be rescued. You could have easily fought back. The two diesels continued to bicker as Boko watched on. We shouldn't argue all night. It won't accomplish anything. Keep looking, and we'll find them in time, sighed Buller. But we've been searching for two hours! Maybe we can continue our search later on. If we do not act promptly, they will be long gone. We cannot let this happen. We will continue to search for them, even if it means staying up all night. The Diesel sighed reluctantly when he noticed Boko. You know, maybe that engine over there could help us with our problem. No, absolutely not, snapped Buller. W why not? because he'll be no help at all. He'll act like some big shot hero and... Need I say more? No, I think you said plenty. Good, now be off with you and let me know once you find them. The diesel rattled away. Then Buller glared furiously at Boko and carried on with his search. Boko was unfazed. All he wanted to do was get back home before the sun rose. Finally, the signal changed and Boko was on his way again. But Boko was stopped by another red signal. Despite the growing impatience, Boko maintained his composure. Finally, the signal changed and Boko continued his journey back home. but it wasn't long when Boko was stopped by yet another red signal. While he was waiting for the signal to change, Boko began to doze off. 
He had just fallen asleep when a loud voice woke him up. Signal screen, old boy, said his driver. Let's go. Boko hoped that the next signal wouldn't be red. Luckily for him, the next signal was green. Boko sighed happily. But as he was getting closer, the signal changed from green to red. Oh, botheration! Boko snapped. But he had no choice. He had to stop. Someone's here, said a voice. Shh, keep it down, said another voice. Boko was taken by surprise. Um, hello? Who said that? asked Boko. There was no reply. Boko looked around. He noticed there was an old siding nearby. I wonder, he said to himself, is there anybody here? No, be on your way. No, you just blew out of cover. I'm sorry, I panicked. It's okay, said Boko. I won't harm you. Mazzarelli. Shh, dummy, he's manipulating us. Oh, I would never manipulate anyone. Please, just show yourself. Maybe we should. And I say we shouldn't. He could be working with E261. Oh, certainly not. Buller is vulgar and I can't stand him. Buller? It's a long story. Please, I can help you. Boko waited patiently. Then, from out of the siding, Boko saw two dirty, rusty pieces. Goodness! exclaimed Boko. They were taking us to the scrapyard tonight, so we decided to fight back. We're trying to find a new railway to live and work. If we're lucky, that is. We know D261 and the other diesels are looking for us. What are your names? asked Boko. I'm Boko. I'm Splatter. And I'm Dodge. Boko stared. Splatter and Dodge? Weren't you Diesel 10's henchmen? We were, explained Splatter. We had enough of him, so we quit. How do you know about us? asked Dodge. We never met you until now. No, but I heard you from Thomas. Thomas? As in, Thomas the Blue Tank Engine from the island of Sodor? Asked Dodge. The very one, said Boko. We can't go back to Sodor, exclaimed Splatter. None of the Sodor engines will be happy if we return. Even though our former boss did most of the dirty work, they won't trust us. Well, you have two choices. Either you can come back to Soda with me, or stay here till Bo- I mean, D261 comes around and takes you two to the scrapyard, said Boko. Is there a third choice? asked Splatter pathetically. Boko didn't answer. He just raised an eyebrow. We'll go with option one, said Dodge. But we may or may not be running low on fuel. All that rushing around and hiding from other diesels, you know how it is. I know what you mean, Boko sighed sadly. One of my brothers tried to escape from Scrap a long time ago. He was... unsuccessful. Dodge and Splatter felt sorry for Boko. Then, the signal changed from red to green. Well, let's not waste any more time, said Boko. Quickly, Boko buffered up to the two diesels and set off once again. Boko hoped that he wouldn't encounter any more red signals. He didn't. Everything went smoothly for the remainder of the journey. Not long now. After the journey I had, I deserve a much needed rest, Boko said to himself. It was two in the morning. Boko, Splatter, and Dodge just crossed the Vickerstown Bridge. Home at last, said Boko. This may be your new home if Sir Top and Hat gives you a fair opportunity. I don't think he will, grumbled Dodge. They just passed Wellsworth Station when Boko saw an old engine shed, and that gave him an idea. You two can rest here, but don't worry. 
I'll come back for you two, and we'll talk to Sir Topham Hatt all about your dilemma. Dodge and Splatter thanked Boko, and immediately they drifted off to sleep. The hours flew by quickly, and sure enough, the sun was shining, birds were singing, and Splatter and Dodge were still asleep. When suddenly... What are you two doing here? Splatter and Dodge woke up with a shock. Right in front of them was James, looking absolutely furious. I said, what are you two doing here? He wished crossly. Dodge and Splatter were so frightened they could barely speak. At that moment, Boko arrived. Oh, thank goodness you're here, Boko, smirked James. Look what I found, unwanted guests. I know that, James, Boko said calmly. I was the one that brought them here. You what? James shrieked. Why? When I was on the mainland, I found Splatter and Dodge in an unused siding. Take them back! Take them back? James, they were escaping from scrap for Buffer's sake. And you brought them here. How can you do this, Boko? Now they're going to reunite with Diesel 10. And who knows what dastardly plans they'll come up with? snapped James. We want nothing to do with Diesel 10, oiled Splatter. He's right. We want to learn from our past mistakes, pleaded Dodge. I'm taking them to talk to Sir Topham Hat, James. If he wants to give them a chance, that's his decision. If not, then another railway can take them in. No engine wants to get scrapped. You know that. James stared coldly at Splatter and Dodge. Then he reached in furiously and set off to collect his coaches. Disgusting! Absolutely disgusting! fumed James. Wait till Gordon hears about this! Boko buffered up to Splatter and Dodge. Right then, off we go to Nafford Station, he said. At Nafford Station, Boko had explained everything to Sir Topham Hat. So Splatter and Dodge were escaping from Scrap, and at first, they did not want to come to Sodor. However, eventually, they realized that they had no other options. If they did not make their way to Sodor, they would have been caught by D261 and taken to the Scrapyard. We understand if you're not willing to give them a fair chance, but I think... Thank you, Boko, interrupted Sir Topham Hat. That will do. Sir Topham Hat was silent for a long time. Then he pointed at Dodge's ladder. One chance. That's all you get, he scolded. Not two, not three, one. If you get caught for being reckless or disobedient, you'll be sent away. Understood? Yes, yes sir. We, we understand, understand clearly, clearly, said Splatter and Dodge. Sir Topham Hat was silent again. Boko, he said at last, take them to the diesel works. Yes, sir, smiled Boko. And he hurried off with Splatter and Dodge towards the diesel works. I wonder if I made a big mistake, muttered Sir Topham Hat. While Splatter and Dodge were relieved that a fair chance was given to them, at the same time, they were nervous. They were eager to put their past behind them and start anew. However, they were also aware of the challenges that they would face. Now everyone is going to know that they have returned, and the following days won't be easy. <laughs>